Hey, what's going on, guys? Today we're going to talk about array operations in Ruby. I, this is the second version of this video. I recorded the video the first time and left out one of the most important methods on an array, which is adding stuff to an array. I don't know how that happened. Uh, but here's take two. Um, a little bit about arrays. So an array in Ruby, we'll call it R. It's the pirate's favorite array. Uh, looks like this. This is what's called an array literal. It means you're constructing an array and assigning it to this variable. So this variable points at the array. And the array can hold all kinds of different types. So you can have this is a string. They're comma separated. So you have an item, a comma, and then another item. Uh, you can hold a number like that. So this will be a, an integer. You can hold a float. And uh, some other types, I guess we could have a, a hash or dictionary, but um, we'll forget about that for now. So this is our array. Oh my, you know, this is crazy. I did this in the first video too. Uh, IRB, you want to be in a Ruby shell before you do that. So let's. OK, so R is now this array. The thing about arrays. You use them when you need a list of something, and generally when you need to go through a list of something. And that's a looping construct, which we'll talk about in the next video. And then you're basically ready to learn Bash. So an array is it's what's called zero indexed. Most lists are zero indexed, uh, almost anything in computer science is. So the zeroth element is actually the first element. So if I wanted to get the this is a string, most non-computer people would be like, oh, that's the first element, so I want that. But that's not. You see, the first element is this, and the actual first element is the zeroth. We begin counting at zero. Okay, so array zero is the first item, and it goes all the way up to the last item, which you can get by either knowing the length of the array. You see, I just went past the array. One, two, three. It gives me nil, so like array 2020 20, 20 gives me nil, there's nothing there. Um, but I can also get the last element by saying negative one. So you basically start counting at zero and at negative one. Just to illustrate this a little bit more visually, let's uh, call, make a new array called zero indexing and we'll call it zero, one, two, three. Okay, so this will be like middle, and then we'll say, oh yeah, off by one in the wrong direction. Go big. So there you have it. This array sort of represents what we're talking about here. On the one hand, you've got index zero, the first item, on and on. You reach the middle item, and then, this is just for you to see, but um, if we're talking about the counting from the end, this is the negative one-th item, so the last thing the negative tooth item, the negative three third item, and so on. I mean, you could do this all the way up to the beginning. So if I say zero indexing, uh, what is that? Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I say the negative ninth, this is the same as saying the zero with. Makes sense? You can count from either end. This is useful. Uh, okay. The most important thing I'm trying to ram into your brain here is that they are zero indexed and that arrays have this method where you use brackets to access a certain member of that array. Strings actually behave very similarly. So if I have a string here and I say zero, what this maybe should hint at is that strings are actually arrays of characters, even though that isn't a type we're going to talk about. So in a lot of programming languages, you have a type that's actually called char care character. Um, but in Ruby, it's nice and simple, and you can basically just say arrays can be treated with array methods, but also strings can be have some array methods. So you can say string negative one should get you a G, and so on. OK, so that's accessing an array. So let's say we, we have our array again, and we want to add something to it. We could say array add poodles. Because why wouldn't you want to add poodles? And you can see it returns the array, and that means this array has 
poodles in it now. I guess I just will show you slicing because it's so simple. Uh, if we say array 0 to 3, that gives us the first 3, and same with uh, string 0 to 3. All right? You can also do you know, 3 to negative 1. This is just for your brain, you don't have to memorize this, but you can slice strings and you can slice arrays because they both have this available. You can use this square bracket syntax to access slices or specific members on them. Okay, so when something isn't there on a string or an array, you get nil. And same with array, you know, 2000. It's not there, 200. It's not there, you get nil. A couple more convenience methods. First, or obviously first. Same with last. Poodles are always last in my book. Uh, something useful that you might use. Is this array empty? Is this array empty? It is. Uh, true and false, these are Boolean values. We haven't really talked about them. It's really just true and false, zero uh, and one. Boolean, I mentioned it once. Uh, they're not really interesting. They're very simple. We're not going to worry too much about it until we get to bash. Uh, include is very useful if you have array, this array, remember? And we say, does this array include? Yes, uh, question marks are valid in a method name. I think just not at the beginning. Does this include nurgles? Well, does it? No, false. Does it include uh, the number three, which it does? True. So you can ask arrays if they include something. This is very useful if like, you have an array of, I don't know, file names, and you're like, crap, did I, did I, does this file exist? So if it includes that, then you don't have to make it. If else, you create the file if it's not there. We'll talk about that when we get to looping and conditionals. Uh, a couple more methods. Push. So we have the array here. Push some new value under the end. So that adds something to the end. So it replaces the negative one -th index, right? Just makes it longer. There's length. Or I really should say length, which is a function, a method. Another more syntax for instead of uh, push, we can say that this is a shorthand for push, right? Add to the end of the array. Uh, let's say Rottweiler. There's a real dog. You can see you have Rottweiler at the end. There's a couple more things like you can say pop. You can pop a value off of an array. So if you want to capture, if you want to take a value from an array because you want to work on an array one at a time until it's empty, you can say array pop, and watch what happens. It takes the last item, but then it actually modifies the array. So this is sort of it changes the array you're talking about by running a method on it. You should be aware of when this is happening. So you can pop an item off the end of an array, and I think it's shift to get it off the front. So you can say uh, array shift to get something off the front. That would be the first item. So the zeroth item you pop off by saying shift, and the last item, the negative one item, you pop off by saying pop. Generally, you're gonna to wanna to capture that. So you can say, you know, whatever the last thing on here is array pop. And then you haven't really lost anything because you have array and you have the last thing that was on there. So that would basically mean you could say array plus last, and this is how the array was before we pop that thing off. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can insert something at a specific index. So it's easy to tack something onto the end, but if you want to add something at the very beginning of an array, you can just insert it at a certain index, or if you need something as the seventh item in the array, you know, you can say at index six, because remember it's zero indexed, and you would be able to do something like array insert, and then the index is the first argument, so like three, but we'll, we'll just say zero we want it at the beginning, and then item, and that should be first in the array now. Make sense? Okay, you don't have to memorize all these methods, you just need to know that these are sort of ways that you can talk to array types, and for some of them string types.
Now you sort of know how arrays work. They're going to work basically the same way in Bash, just uglier. And you can kind of remember that. These concepts are all the same, and you will reuse them in Bash when you're scripting on Linux. They're just a little bit uglier than in Ruby. And that obviously comes... Bash has a lot of advantages. They're just not syntactic advantages. It's not prettier to look at. And it can be kind of confusing to look at, which is why I'm doing this in Ruby first. So in the next video, we'll talk just a tiny, tiny bit. It'll be a really short video about hash, the hash type, and operations that you can do on hashes, which sort of, I, the Python name for them is dictionaries, and I think that's a little bit more intuitive. So see you in the next video.